Hello and thank you so much for joining me as we take a second look and we're back with our guest who made quite an impression first time that he was here talking about his potential candidacy for VA4 South and whether or not he may decide to pick a political party or have the political party pick him uh, that was of keen interest to you members of the public but he came first time around with a number of proposals actual tangible proposals and plans that he would like to see uh, implemented in v for south whether he's a candidate or not and i'm speaking about none other than randall lionai mondezier or mondezier as we see here in saint Lucia. it's always good to be with you thank, thank you. you so much for being with us thank you lisa and, um, you know, we're coming off the euphoria of our wonderful sprint queen, Julian Alfred. You came here uh, from St. Vincent, where you now reside. And uh, just so that you can be with your people, your home people, and celebrate uh, the achievements of Julian Alfred. For you, what was that like? It was phenomenal. I would like to first thank um, the Honorable Prime Minister for a fantastic fantastic job that he led uh, this administration to show kind and care to Julianne Alfred. I think what she has done as an individual, as an athlete, that she has claimed this victory and has become the world's number one, coming right here from St. Lucia, which contributes to the greatness of our people. And she is, again, another element of living proof that St. Lucian people, we are a very, very great nation. And notwithstanding, Lisa, we are the third most researched on Google subject matter on Google right now in the whole entire world. So Julian Alfred has again brought a, a, a high level of, of pride to our country and again showing that St. Lucians, we are ready to lead the world. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And having her now uh, be uh, declared an ambassador, tourism ambassador for St. Lucia, I think, as you just mentioned there, uh, that it's going to do wonders uh, for us. And, and great things, great things are abound um, that Julian Alfred's successes um, is also that of her nation. So we want to say a big thank you to Julian Alfred because thank it's a lot of hard work. It is. Yes. As a, a former af athlete myself, and a lot of people don't know this, I did play for Bisenberg when I lived in Germany, mm -hmm. soccer. I held the sev second position um, in the provincial kickboxing. So I did hold a title in kickboxing as well in, in, in Germany. Um, but it's great to see what the Honorable Prime Minister has done and uh, how he's elevated mm -hmm. Julian Alfred for the world to see that we are so um, entrenched in our people and that we're always willing to support our very own and carry our own people to greater heights. But with that being said, Lisa, I'd just I'd like to add a couple of things to the Prime Minister directly. Honorable Prime Minister, job well done. Fantastic. It could not have been done better. But Prime Minister, I'd like to draw to your attention a few people I'd like to make mention of. I would like to make mention of Dr. Merle Clark. Dr. Clark, you spent your life in medicine to help our nation find the place to create initiatives and infrastructure and programs and uh, the level of knowledge that you've been able to commit to expressing to make us realize that we need to continue to work hard to improve on our health system. Dr. Mo Clark, your job has not been an easy one as you have spent your life creating the environment for the sick to be healed, the elderly to be taken care of, and for people overall to have a comfort with their life. And I would like to say to you, I appreciate this. I would also like to make recognition of Dr. Jacqueline Bird. Dr. Bird, without a doubt, you have made some very influential and some very spectacular moves 
in the health industry as a pediatrician, also in the art of taking care and being uh, an advocate for human beings in your charity for, in your charity work. So, Dr. Bird, I would like to commend you on, on your work, and I would like to say I recognize you, and again, I ask the Prime Minister to recognize these great women of our country, these Caribbean women, to continue to elevate them. I would also like to recognize Commissioner Pelius as a strong Caribbean woman. And Commissioner, policing is not an easy job, and fighting crime nationally is not an easy job. Mr. Prime Minister, I would like to say to you, Honorable Prime Minister, that fighting crime is a collective responsibility. You may change your commission a million times, but the whole police force is not equipped to fighting crime alone. It will take collective responsibility. We must realize that, and I want to make note of this, Lisa, that our country the development and the power of our country was not forged by any government. It was forged by men on the outside of government who have made our country great. Well, absolutely. J.Q. Charles, mm -hmm. Mr. Valmo, Butch Stewart, Mr. Bryce, Debbie Tobier, Mrs. Um, um, Shalri, Brian Dahar, Daher, mm -hmm. if you will. These people who've been outside of politics are the ones who've really made St. Lucia what it is today. Their contributions should be recognized. I would like to further say, Mr. Prime Minister, we need to recognize Dr. Jimmy Fletcher. Dr. Jimmy Fletcher has represented us worldwide in the most key forms of the world in environment. Dr. Stevenson King, sorry, Dr. Stephen King, has made leaps and bounds to reassuring that our medical environment is made sound and his contribution in charitable work as a humanitarian has been phenomenal over 30 years of work established for mr king the only thing i could say to the prime minister is this if you could not find a better governor general in this country then you're not looking in the right places mr prime minister look towards dr king so you think Dr. King uh, would want to leave, you know, I mean, he's, you know, his practice or, the, what, you know, his, his um, medical business at this time for him to become the Governor General of St. Lucia? Actually, Dr. King is right now looking to retire from medicine. You, 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 you have some intimate knowledge there. And that is precisely so. And I think if he's moving away from it, he can do something that's lighter, that falls. So that would be your suggestion? That would be my absolute the suggestion. The names that you've mentioned, um, yes, they've, they've done spectacular things for this country, contributed to na nation building and national development. But they've been recognized in some shape or form. Are you saying that more ought to be done on how these individuals are recognized? And what is it exactly that you are proposing? Most definitely. I believe if Dr. King was made a governor general with his influence and his connections both nationally, mm -hmm. regionally, and internationally, there is so much more he could bring to our country without a doubt. I believe if Dr. Jimmy Fletcher was empowered in that manner, that there's so much more he could do for our environment without the shadow of a doubt. So, the Prime Minister talks about inclusivity in the governing of our country. And this embraces inclusivity. Okay. And recognizing our strong female Caribbean women who live right here in St. Lucia, just as he did, that phenomenal job he did with Julian Alfred, let us recognize the women I've mentioned. It is very important. Give young people role models. Establish role models, establish heroes in our own country because our country has heroes. Uh, Sir um, Derek Walcott and um, Arthur Lewis, Julian Alfred, these are heroes. These are our heroes. 
We need to embrace them. We need to recognize them. We need to expose them. Dr. King, Dr. Jimmy Fletcher, uh, Dr. Merle Clark, uh, former Commissioner Pelius. These people are our heroes. Well, I, I completely agree with you on that point. I think um, because the entire nation recognizes, well, you mentioned Sir Arthur Lewis, you mentioned uh, uh, Derek Walcott, uh, our Nobel laureates, and now Julian Alfred, you know, is in that very, very top uh, three of, you know, St. Lucians who just completely passed that bar of excellence. And there are others who are out there, like you rightly say. I think what we need now is a plan on how we help people uh, translate that level of achievement and excellence. How does it inspire people now? How do they now take that, those examples of their heroes, and apply it to their everyday lives so that they now cannot just feel empowered as a St. Lucian, but now they can say, well, okay, if they can do it, I now can achieve anything that I set my mind to. So I'm looking forward to seeing how, what is the national thrust towards getting everybody on board with the idea that they can achieve excellence wherever they are at. Um, because, you know, not everybody can be in the top. 1% or the top 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. one percent um, because you know, that's just the law of the jungle. Um, but we all can be excellent in whatever endeavors that we choose. So I really want to see a, a sort of shift in our national thinking, a shift in national attitude, and um, hopefully it, yes. will, it, it will come by. Not only that, I totally believe if the Prime Minister addresses what I've just spoken about here, it will create his legacy as a leader, as a manager, as a great manager. It would give young people a credence of understanding what good or great management is. It is through these sorts of uh, initiatives and these recognitions that you make a name for yourself in history and your legacy will supersede. And because of this, it gives young people something that they can embrace to want to be like the next yeah. Philip G. Pierre. So completely agree with you on that. So last time you were with us, as yes. I was saying at the top, um, you have some great ideas of your own. And if implemented, then we would be seeing a sort of uh, blueprint that you will be providing to individuals on how to empower themselves, just as we were saying, and for them to be able to have their own measure of success and achievement. Yes. Um, so you have been eyeing the VFO South seat. Yes, well, I have. Yeah, you, you told us that openly. Is that still an ambition for you to move into um, the politics on the ground for VFO South? It is. And it isn't, but let's talk about why it is. Um, and by extension, let's talk about what I have done and what I'm doing and what I'm proposing and the benefits of what I'm proposing. So as I started off in politics after I came out of the music business, one of the first things I did was there was a fire in Baccarat many years ago. So I led the charge to do a fundraiser for the people in Baccarat. Mm -hmm. So everybody got a check that who was affected. Then after that, I was a PRO, yes, as well, doing the same things. From there, um, the other initiative I did was license plating. If you notice the vanity plates on cars, so that is something I'd established for the government that would lessen the burden of the taxpayers, that the taxpayers can actually purchase something, and it would help the communications and works department be able to have funding to help their staff, to pay staff. Um, uh, there's also a security system I designed for that and I presented it to Communications and Works and unfortunately because I move around so much I travel as a chef and so forth um, it wasn't all implemented but I'm hoping that the uh, Minister of Communications and Works the Honorable Stephen King who's Stevenson asked King. Stevenson King sorry has asked to see me so I will be going back to him to discuss this further uh, in the interest of national security. Because, you see, you have things like drive-bys. 
people who are just making plates and putting on. So I designed a system for that. And I would like to see that through. Um, then I, I did handicap tourism. I introduced handicap tourism to St. Lucia uh, underneath the Kenny Anthony administration. We did the first phase on it. It was successful. And I would like to see that continued and would get into the benefits of all of this. So where are we now? As a potential candidate for Viewfort South, this is what I would like to present to the people of Viewfort South, if I may. So I would like to start with the younger generation, children from the ages of 9 to 14. I would like to empower them with employment that they can work from Fridays, Saturdays and Sundays, car wash, because that's what I've developed in St. Vincent. And everything I'm about to talk about, I've established in the St. Vincent. So it's not a no-brainer. It's not new. I'm not reinventing the wheel. I think the age for employment in St. Lucia is 16, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. But when you have young kids who want to sell a little lemonade, it's not real employment. It's something that they're doing. To raise a little so you have it like sort of an of association, course, yeah. a sort of club. It's, it's, yeah, a okay. club, All so right. if you may. And that's yeah, a great yeah. idea, actually. Mm -hmm. It helps these young people develop to become more responsible citizens. It helps them in them to understand finance and economics and this is very important because this is the world we live in we live in an area of finance and economics it also gives them an opportunity to be able to help moms pay a little bill for school bus ride the bus fare uh, lunch things of that nature and then I would like to tackle the, the older boys and girls into that same system but have them working from Mondays to Fridays and give them the same credence where they can actually become citizens, model citizens for the others in their community of Viewfort South. So for the younger ones, this is like an after-school program, or uh, for the younger, how do you see this working? For the younger ones, it's just Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, because you go to school during the week. Okay, Fridays. We don't okay. play with All education. Right. Good. With the older ones who have left school, they don't have nothing to do, or they might have dropped out of school, I want to have something established for them. The other thing I'd like to establish is, I would like to establish the Viewfort South Food Village. So as a chef, I would like to take these young people, like I did in Marsha, mm -hmm. and made the program where young people come to self, uh, soft skills management courses. They get a lunch every day. At the end of the week, they get a stipend of $80 to hold them for the weekend. Then they're back at school again. And then they learn a skill. So this is very important. This initiative worked extremely well. They all received the certificate of participation. But what was very important in this... And that was in the Marsha pilot. It was exactly in Marsha, Castries East, across the street from the Prime Minister's constituency office. And um, I must say the Prime Minister, we did talk about this. Um, he wasn't in power. The United uh, the United Workers' Party was a party in part of the time. But uh, the Honorable Philip J. Pierre commended me highly for that piece of work. And I am going to be pushing to bring it back in full force, as he is now the Prime Minister. The other thing I'd like to push... But is that for Marsha, the Marsha area? But you, exclusively for Viewfort South, we speak in now. This is for Viewfort South. Okay. I want to bring this to Viewfort South, because it worked before. These initiatives work in other countries, and they, I'm putting them for Viewfort South. I would like to bring in the handicap tourism into Viewfort South as well because it's a, there are 52 million tourists, 52 million, sorry, disabled people in the five countries that we do business with. The beauty about my pro project is this. One, handicappers never travel alone. So out of the 52 million, all I'm trying to get is 100,000 every year. That 100,000 will come with two or more people. So let's say that each one comes with two people. That's 300,000 people coming to our shores. Mm -hmm. Think of the amount of employment it will create and how much more money will be generated in our country and how we can have that finance for our GDP to reduce our, G our, G our debt ratio. Very important. And I would like to bring this into view for itself. Then I would like to put the Basava Company which is the milling of two ingredients mm -hmm. to make a flour. As I have here, it has been sent to a lab testing. I have been proved, approved by the food and uh, food. I've been approved by the Bureau of Standards, sorry. 
I've been approved by the Drug Administration because of the magnitude of what has come out of this flower from the testing. Hospitals are very interested in this. So we're talking about the green banana alongside yes, the cassava for our audience. Mm -hmm. I've spoken to the Prime Minister, Honorable Philip J. Pear, about it. He knows very well that we do not have the landmass to produce enough for the outside market. But what is important to me is that it would give 3,000 people jobs now. That's about another thousand. If we just look at the view for itself, let's where see. 3,000 jobs, break in, down for us where, where it will be created and how. Okay. So we have 3,500 banana farmers in Lucia right now. Banana farming has gone dropped. Yeah. We can bring them back. With this, we can actually establish a milling plant in Viewfort South. Beside the milling plant, we can establish the bakery beside the milling plant. More employment. We can actually have bread to sell throughout the region, throughout the country, sorry. The airport is right there. We can make the muffins, the cakes, the breads to sell to the airlines services to put on their airplanes. That is another, another potpourri of employment. So this is very important. Uh, and let me just mention one thing. The other very important reason why I'm trying to establish handicapped tourism in St. Lucia, we have a low season. We no longer need a low season. Handicappers only travel in low season. They don't go in high season where there's all the traffic. Which means, with this alone, we can fill the low season void. Now, let me stick a pin where I'm at right now. Mr. Prime Minister, you talk about inclusivity. You talk about you need people with ideas. You talk about catapulting St. Lucia into the new millennium in advancement and technology and everything else. If this is not what you're asking for, then Mr. Prime Minister, I've done a lot of work for nothing. If this is not what you're talking about, then the question is, then bring in the other candidates who have the ideas. You're making up, is this a public pitch to the Prime Minister and, sure. and leader of the Sinusha Labour Party yes, so it that is. he can have you chosen as definitely a, but you do know that there is a process yes there is and i'm really i'm willing and ready to follow the process but you're making a very public pitch yes. to the prime minister and you've already singled out yourself as being the one yes and and we must understand that the prime minister is asking for certain things the prime minister has a vision to bring saint lucia forward and i'm giving him so have you had private discussions? Because I would imagine uh, that you are not uh, now making contact with the Prime Minister and leader of the political leader of the Sinusha Labour Party to, to, to declare your candidacy or your interest in running for the Sinusha Labour Party. I have I, had private conversation with the Prime Minister with my interests. And I will say so far, the first battle has been won. The people of Viewfort, I can say to you comfortably, the Prime Minister has okayed me to go forward with the Basava factory. That is a victory so far. I've had dialogue with Dr. Kenny Anthony about UMA, Universal Musical Association, where I'll be taking all the artists from Viewfort, getting their music into London, into Toronto, and into Africa. They have agreed to make play one hour of the music on their radio stations, we'll play one hour of their stuff down in Viewfort. And I would like to say that I've been very impressed with um, um, a musician from Viewfort, Ali Cat, and I have every intention of pushing Ali Cat to be the ambassador for music, excuse me, the ambassador for music for Viewfort. And so Dr. Kennedy Anthony has given me the nod that he, like, he would like to engage in that particular initiative. That's Wonderful. another battle won. We haven't won the victories yet because they're not on the ground yet. But these so far are two bat battles that we have won. So I could comfortably say to the people of Viewfort, Dr. Kenny Anthony loves you and he wants to take care of you as a people.
but he he is the incumbent yes, he's he is. right mp yes, so he does is. that with you in this very public pitch does that mean that you have knowledge that dr kenny anthony is not seeking uh, re-election as the or, or he does not wish to contest the upcoming general election from what i'm gathering from dr kenny anthony is that he will be stepping out of the arena and that he will need a successor um the honorable philip j pierre has been very um excited about the factory about manufacturing bringing back farmers to the free creating more employment more more, more, more employment for the people of um of uh, view for itself and that's completely needed and and it's no secret that v4 south considering all that it has been through um in the last uh, two years yes. um the, the heightened uh, crime and and violence um the the there is a uh, sort of malaise that's going on down there the yes. business community yes. um definitely needs a bit of a push your ideas for the factory, the Basava factory, mm -hmm. is, is this contingent upon the uh, political party selecting you or you are offering this as a part of your contribution to nation building? Wanting to run the, or represent the people of v South, I'm giving them reasons why I am the best candidate for the people of Viewfort South. If I'm not chosen to run the Viewfort South seat, then it is up to the Prime Minister right now, because he is the Prime Minister, Philip G. Pierre, to say to me, like, as he said, the Basava is great. I would like to push the Viewfort South food village. Uh, Lion I, let's work. Let's work together. Let's make this happen. Because at the end of the day, I am here to represent the people and not any particular individuals. But from where I sit, where if, if when people ask, the, and everybody's asking the question, is it Labour you're running for or is it United Workers Party you're running for? My answer is still, at this point in time, neither. The only person I am supporting right here, right now, is the Honorable Prime Minister Philip J. Pierre, and I'll tell you why. He is one of the only Prime Ministers I know that works so hard because I've seen it with my own eyes and I've witnesses, witnessed it. He's the only pol politician I know who's fair and just, truthful and honest. He's the only candidate that I know really, truly wants the best for this country and he shows it all the time. And if you want to doubt me, take a good look at what he did for Ms. Julian Alfred. If that is not putting your best foot forward for your individuals and the people of your country, then I don't know what is. And I say to the Honorable Philip J. Pierre, kudos to you. My sword will but be... But some would say this was a fait accompli, that uh, at the end of the day, um, the nation had to do something big. The government had to do something big for, for Julian Alfred and the people of St. Lucia in country and in the diaspora would have had it no other way. And uh, so perhaps it was politically um, astute for the, for the prime minister yes. and the government to ensure uh, that they came out in a big way. But that set aside, she is deserving of it all. She is, and, and, and I've made that publicly clear. Ms. Alfred has claimed Right. Her mark so we, we, we're not disputing that, but um, yes. uh, just to, to your comment, yes. uh, that it would be to the benefit of the uh, Sinusha Labour Party, which, which is the definitely. government, it, 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 um, for mm -hmm. them to, you know, roll out the red carpet yes. uh, for Julian Alfred. Definitely. Right. It, it would create political mileage without a doubt. Let's not, let, let's not be oblivious to how people do things in politics. But I will say, um, this wasn't big. This was huge yes, for the whole world to see. Absolutely. It was absolutely huge. L let me tell you, S since Mr. the Prime Minister, Philip Jepe and I have had a conversation on Basava, the Labour Party in Nigeria, in Africa, 
have sent me a proposal to partner up with St. Lucia. Right now, the king of the Obim, Obobini kingdom and his lawyers are preparing a document for me, for St. Lucia to present to the Prime Minister of St. Lucia that they'll give us 450 acres of land to operate Basava on because it's a $42 billion industry, the flower industry. And they see that we can ca ta ca tap into it. But we are registered and copywritten mm -hmm. already. So which means that product will be a St. Lucia product. And we are going to use every means that we can use to help our country grow and develop and increasingly empower our people. Because at the end of the day, if St. Lucians are looking for governments, and I'm not trying to put down any government, I'm just being factual here, because my truth is my shield, and my knowledge will be my sword. The truth is, it is the great men who I mentioned before are the ones who made St. Lucia what it is. Because it is a shame that at this moment, that our politicians are fighting with each other to discredit each other. And while they're doing this, I'm using all my time instead of joining the bandwagon and fighting with other politicians, I use my time mm -hmm. to establish what I can for the people of St. Lucia. And I would like to say to both parties, we need to stop. It's going to take collective responsibility to put our country back on track. And you've committed yourself to that. And so the proposal that you've received uh, from Nigeria, um, someone listening to this would say, Whew, this sounds like a, it's great, um, but is it a lofty idea? Um, uh, because there may be so many hurdles that you would have to um, overcome in order to, to see this come yes. to fruition. Yes. Um, least of all, you know, shipping. Sure. And, you know, so all of those, you know, very important details. Uh, have you worked out those details? Sure. Look at if look at the population of Africa. If we are to manufacture what is say Lucian in Africa and distribute it, just say Africa alone. We are a population of only 180,000 people. If we're tapping into the handicapped tourism industry, which is a multi-billion dollar industry, the flower industry, it's a $42 billion industry, there's only 180,000 people here for us to feed and grow and develop. So the idea then is for the product. So you, you want to establish, because I'm trying to get it clear. Yes. You will have a factory here. Yes. So the factory here would be for the, the local for the local and regional consumption. That is correct. And what will happen in Africa, in Nigeria more specifically, yes. there will be a f not just the land, so you will be able to have the uh, green bananas grown. That is correct. The cassava grown. That is correct. And then you'll have a factory there. That is correct. Because you have more mass. And more importantly enough, production capacity. And more importantly enough, the Prime Minister has made Julian, Juliana Alfred an ambassador. We can make Ambassador of St. Lucia to Africa for our, product, our productivity. So we're creating more employment for more St. Lucians. And we're giving them, we're establishing denomics. We must never forget, denomics is an important factor in all of this. Because at the end of the day, denomics, which stands for develop, empower, and enrich. We want to develop the, the institutions, empower the people by giving them work, um, and enriching them because under every single one of these initiatives, not only do you get paid, 15% of all the profits of that specific entity is divided amongst all the workers who are working within the entity. So somebody was saying, okay, wow, this is great. Yes. Uh, when is this getting off the ground? Good. A very good question. It has already started. The Honorable Philip J. Pierre has given me the go-ahead to begin Basava. So we're working on all the particulars for St. Lucia. He understands and knows that the demand for this, based on our paperwork, is so big. We don't have the land, the land mass to do this. And therefore, I've taken the initiative to communicate with the sister party in Africa, the Labour Party, 
to work with us. But that would be, are you trying to do both simultaneous or are we looking to uh, establish the factory here and just, you know, ensure that you have the plan padded down, as we say, yes. um, get that whole machinery oiled and working. Very good question. And before now replicating Very good in question. Nigeria. And the answer is we must develop it here first. The Honorable Prime Minister Philip J. Pierre has established this, that we must develop this here first. And if Africa is too far for us to operate, we don't want to send our people there, Guyana has an abundance of land that can be used to actually establish this just next door. So we are, we are in perfect sense. I am not a great politician, but I am a fantastic humanitarian. I may not dabble into the things that politicians are doing right now while they're quarreling and fighting and discrediting each other. I, my name has never been called in anything of that nature because like Dr. King, we establish ourselves in this country to serve our people, especially the poor man, especially the marginalized, especially those who are facing sociological deprivation every single day of their lives. We want to come to a place where we are going to put an end to this. And with the help of the Honorable Philip J. Pierre, the man that he is, it can be done. And so I cannot speak on the other candidates, whether they be Labour Party or United Workers Party, but I can speak for a man I know for 14 years plus, intimately. And for you, with the Basava, you've identified lands, um, the land space for the factory. I know you say you'll be uh, using the farmers, the existing farmers, to be able. So those conversations, uh, do you have any idea when you'll be able to have the conversations with the farmers uh, so that they can now enter into agreements with yourself, with your company? Okay, great question. The actual structural design has been completed. I'm now waiting for a gentleman by the name of Joel Woodley. Joel Woodley does the major prep proposals for Ralph Gonzalez in St. Vincent. He is my go-to man. He's been my go-to man for many years. So when that is complete, and I present the whole package to the Honorable Prime Minister, the Honorable Prime Minister, it will be in his hands for him to determine what part of Viewfort South we are going to put the factory. That is out of my reach. If so you've handed, because I, I, I want it to be able to be clear. Yes. You say it's for the prime minister to decide where and it's going cabinet. to be and for the cabinet. Okay. So are you gifting the Basava project to the government? No. You're gifting them the idea? The idea, they can do two things. Have me work with these initiatives, which I would prefer to do so it doesn't get all messed up like some of the other initiatives I've had other governments in the past. They took it, they ran with it, they've messed it up, and it's fallen flat. I don't want that to happen because I've worked hard in St. Vincent to actually showing that it can work because I was involved in engaging it. Now, if I'm chosen to run that seat, not only do I have a plan for view for itself, I have a national plan, an economical development national plan for St. Lucia. So while Mr. Hile might be as tourist, Minister of Tourism, very busy um, trying to fix up CIP, Mr. Hile, I've handed you an initiative for tourism. While the Minister of Agriculture is running around trying to figure out what he's trying to figure out, I've given you Basava and so on and so on. And there, there are other initiatives I have but these have to do with national interest. Right. So these, as you indicated, so these two projects can certainly be... Uh, three projects. Three projects. Plus the, the village, the Viewfort South right, food village. Right, the food village. So you, your, your aim is not to limit them to Viewfort South, but no. to have it um, so that it can touch every constituency, yes. com major communities, that sort of thing. But I have other yes. development projects specifically for But there are for others yes. that you have specifically. That is correct. Okay. And you, you care to give us at least one or two of those others? Absolutely not. Okay, so... You choose me to run a seat... That's close I, to your chest. I, I will bring my kingdom towards you. You choose me to run a seat, 
Not only will I work my seat, I will show and help your candidates what is necessary, the ideas I have, to make sure that they have something solid to bring to that constituency, to bring the Denomics Economical Development Plan to their constituency. Well, some may say that you're trying to put the Senusha Labour Party on the spot by publicly um, declaring your interest and uh, somewhat, um, uh, I don't want to use the word challenge, but you, you, you have sort of uh, pointed to the Prime Minister um, for your selection. So some would say this, this feels like a sort of gotcha moment. You're trying to... Uh, Absolutely not. Back the party up into a corner. My truth will be my, my, my shield. Notwithstanding, I have talked to the Honorable Michael Chastney about these initiatives because this is a collective, it takes collective responsibility for us to build this country. We have no time right now to play around with politics. There's absolutely... People are starving. They're dying in St. Louis. Young people are dying in our country. We, pointlessly. We need to bring collective responsibility. So if Mr. Chastney believes that, hey, Mondesi, what you have here, we can embrace this. We can do something with it. Then that is for Mr. Chastney to, to decide. So and if, if the Prime Minister, the Honorable Prime Minister, Philip J. Pierce says, Mr. Mondesi, you know what? These ideas, you've done them, you've launched the companies, you made them work, we know that this is what we can embrace. The Labour Party wants to embrace this sort of movement, this sort of economical development plan. Mr. Mondesi, will you work with us? Okay. So you, you remain an open I'm re field? I have to remain open because it is unfair for the people of Viewfort for me to want to choose something for them that that person does not want. They have to come and say they want this. And if none of them choose it, then I leave it to whoever they put there to go and show what they can do for the people of v So what is their plan? What is their idea? And who have they spoken to to bring this to fruition? For now, I have spoken to Ms. Nicole Trudeau. She's the project's um, uh, coordinator for the United Nations, which is Justin Trudeau's cousin. Uh, Justin Trudeau is the Prime Minister of Canada. For now, I've been interviewed by USAID, and they are on board, and they absolutely love my approach to creating national development for the young people, especially the young people. I say this to the people of St. Lucia. The next candidate that comes to your door who has nothing and no proof or no evidence of what they can do for your constituency. Think again, because Randall Lionai Mondesi has showed you what it is or what you should expect from a candidate to come to represent your constituency. No longer must you be fooled. Do not be bamboozled. Make your vote count for something as opposed to nothing. Because what you'll get, five years, 10 people are labor, five years, then 10 people gone flubble. Five years after, they've gone back. So time, so, so obviously time is, you know, approaching for uh, the next general election. Um, and you need to be on the ground for you to be able to work the ground. So how long will you hold out for you to get a phone call or, or contact from either side, although I think you've indicated that your preference um, would be for the Prime Minister and, and political leader of the Senusha Labour Party um, to give you a nod. Uh, so how much time do you have on your hands? How much longer will you be waiting? That's a great question. Mr. Prime Minister, Mr. Alan Chastney, how long are you going to make the people wait? How much murders do you need to see? How much unemployment must we face? How many young people must graduate from school with nothing in their hands. How long do they have to wait? This is a question that must be posed to these two leaders because they're both responsible for the direction of our country. So some would tell you, those who are, you know, involved in, in the political process, that it is the constituency groups.
So while the leaders um, may have some inkling as to what they would want, what they would prefer, um, however, the constituency groups are the ones who would, you know, lead the charge on this. Have you endeavored to make any contact with the constituency groups of either party? Yes, I have. And? And um, only to tell them what my intention is. Again, it is up to a constituency group to say, Mondesi, we've listened to you. You've shown proof in what you're doing. And we want to embrace what you have. Let's begin the process of suppressing unemployment. Let's begin the process of suppressing the crime issue. Let's begin the process of, of suppressing the degradation of our women that men use public service, not public service, mm -hmm. sorry, the public media to um, under, undermine women. I mean, it's ridiculous. We, we, we must follow what is there. We must make our country a better place, but we can only do this collectively because I'm warning the country again, politics is not going to save you. So what's your next move? So my next move is I wait. Okay. I'm not the one responsible. I'm not the one in charge. All I can do is wait. Right. So while you, you wait, the plans are there, and you will continue to uh, refine what the plan is. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. Well, we want to wish you the best again, and we're looking forward to your next update on where you're at, particularly um, with the proposal coming out of Nigeria and for us to see where, that, where that's at and um, uh, whether the Prime Minister would now indicate to you where Basava will be established down in V4 South. I'm very excited about the Basava. I said this on the, the last time that we spoke. I do believe that it has phenomenal, phenomenal potential. Um, really, it can help us with uh, health. And handicap tourism. Um, yes, the handicap tourism as well, yes. tremendous. Um, lots of work to do on the in-between. However, I do believe that these uh, projects are fabulous and they have absolute, absolute great potential. So we want to wish you the best again and look forward to your next updates. And we want to thank you very much for, for watching. Uh, Mr. You. Joseph, join me next time. Thank you.